this out. It's a Sony EVC3 8mm recorder. Just like its big brother, the VHS, this thing does everything. It's got, I think it's even got a tuner built into this thing. Okay, I may have jumped the gun. It may not have a tuner. This remote control, it's got uh, channels on it, but the channels on this may only be when it's in TV mode. That's what that might be for. Let's just pop the top off this thing and just see what it's got in it. We'll be able to determine whether it's got a tuner in it pretty quick or not. It does have an RF input and an RF output, but that might just be for the modulator that's built in because it does have a channel 3 modulator. So we'll get the top off the thing and we'll see if it actually has a tuner in it or whether that is just a modulator. Looks like that may just be a modulator. If we look down here closer at it, normally, normally there's a, 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 a tuner a plug on the side that plugs into an external tuner. I have no idea if this thing works or not. We're going to find out. I do have an 8 millimeter tape here. And uh, we'll see whether this thing even loads the tape and whether it works. So, put the tape in. Tape goes down. Ah, tape doesn't do anything other than go down. Doesn't thread. And now it won't even object. So, we have our work cut out for us. We have to take a look and see what's wrong with this thing. Now this, I have no idea. I have no idea the history on this unit. It was uh, given to me. An old friend of mine uh, passed away a couple of years ago and this was in his collection. And I was uh, visiting another mutual friend that uh, took over his business. And he comes out and says, here, this is for you. So, this is a new little piece to add to my collection. We'll be taking a look and seeing what is actually wrong with this thing. And uh, see if we can get this little 8mm deck working. We look here on the left side as it appears to load, it appears to jam up it. Just try to lower the camera down a bit so you can see this as I put the tape in. If I give that a push down. We'll try to load the tape. Okay, it just loaded, but the tape got stuck. I have a feeling that this drum is so contaminated. The, the guy that owned this thing was a 10-pack-a-day smoker, or pretty close to it. And yes, he died of lung cancer. But this thing is looking pretty sad. I have to do some major cleaning in here. I mean, the, the tape is actually, look at this. There's so much filth on this drum that the tape is loaded but uh, the tape isn't even that tight but it's sticking to the drum so let's see if we can get the tape out while we'll eject it we'll just give it a little flip up here there we go now the tape came out oops didn't come out all the way do that again. There we go. We're gonna have to take this mechanism apart and see exactly what's going on. We have a timing error or something on here. So the whole mechanism is gonna to have to be torn down to see what's going on with this one. So we'll start by just removing the mechanism from the board. So we'll start by removing the front cover, the front front panel, a couple screws. We'll take the screws out on the bottom, remove the bottom um, cover as well. Now we're able to remove the front panel. we can work at removing the actual deck assembly. Generally a good place to start is the screws that are marked with arrows. They generally are ones that 
come out during the servicing. And this whole deck should lift out. Should, because I've never removed one of these before. Okay, that those screws remove that circuit board. And there's one more screw right here that needs to come out. I'll just widen that camera up a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Remove this screw. And this chassis, which is essentially a, a camcorder chassis, should just lift right out of the electronics. And it should unplug, if I'm not mistaken. Everything should plug right into this thing. We can get the whole mechanism out. And there we go. Now we have the deck. The deck is completely unplugged from the rest of the unit so that we can actually concentrate on this unit here because there are definitely some issues with this. It's not threading up properly. And I'm thinking we have some timing issues in here somewhere. So now what we have is essentially a camcorder down here. This is the, you know, you got the same mechanism that the 8mm cameras had. This is the A mechanism, the A mechanism cameras used. Actually, no, this is prior to the A mechanism. This would be the a mechanism similar to what the uh, the V series, the CCD V330 and, and the V35 and the SP7 and uh, Probably that V110, the, uh, the V5000, the V series of cameras use this type of chassis. The FX series of cameras use the A mechanism and the TR series of cameras use, well one of the mechanisms they used was the B series. Anyway, let's take a look and go through the mechanical timing of this thing and uh, see why this thing is doing what it's doing. I know there's a problem with the actual loading mechanism, the way it loads the tape down, it's, it's jamming it. It's not going down straight, so that's going to be a timing issue on the front loader. So we're going to go through that first. So first, we're going to remove the front loader, and that's done by removing a couple of screws that hold the front loading, the whole loading assembly on here, so we can work, go through this manually. There's a screw there, and there's another screw down here. By removing these two screws, we should be able to lift the whole front loading mechanism away from the unit, which we can. And we'll just unplug this motor. A little black connector. Okay, now we can lift away the front loading mechanism. And there, oh, there's two more screws on the back side here that need to come out. That way we can work on the front loading mechanism completely separate from the rest of the chassis. In case you're wondering, this is a number zero. It's a special uh, screwdriver that Sony uh, supplied all their servicers with. It's a special, they called it a Walkman screwdriver. It's, a, it's like a number zero Phillips. Okay, now that we've got the gear assembly out, we can go through this manually and you'll see how it works. How the hell with it? Let's just take it apart and check the timing. A little, couple little catches on the side here, and then this whole thing should lift up. There we go. Our gear assembly now opens. Now we can see what's going on inside here and see if there's any parts that are broken. If I just take out one of these wheels, I can then turn the mechanism by hand without having to rotate through the motor. And if I grab a tape, So we can un unlock the little lock levers on the side of the cassette. It should now go in. And as you can see, as the gears turn, oh, this gear's cracked. That's going to be a problem right there. See the crack in this gear? There's where our problem is. And I, I, I hate to say this, but I think I'm going to have to abandon this thing before I even start because with that broken gear there, we're never going to be able to get this thing timed properly gear just fell right off you see that 
Now maybe we can glue this gear back on, but nah, I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be touch and go. There's our problem though with this front loader. That's why it's going in kind of crooked. It's because the gears that time it are buggered up. And that was quite a, a common problem with these plastic nylon gears is that uh, they uh, all too easily broke. There's that buddy dog again. Shut up, Motley. So I'm going to try putting some crazy glue on here. I don't think that's going to help me. Maybe some JB Weld or something might, but that gear's got a split in it. And that was a problem with these nylon gears is that uh, they had a tendency to crack. And once they cracked, um, you're kind of screwed as far as uh, you know, finding a gear like this now would be next to impossible. I might have better luck um, if I try to, uh, if I try to put the gear back together with some heat, you know, put, put my, Put my soldering iron on here and just try to fuse the uh, plastic back together where it's cracking. I might have better luck because the problem with uh, this white nylon uh, gears like this, like this one here, it's got a crack in it, is that uh, glue doesn't stick to it, right? That's the problem. You can see where the crack is right there. See? So the problem is trying to get something in there to glue that. Glue doesn't stick very well to this type of material. So I may be better just to try and heat that and fuse it back together where it's cracking and then put some put some epoxy or something on it and put it in place with epoxy. That's more, the only thing I think I can try is to see if I can get that thing to work. So in the past I have had success doing this and other um, parts that are broken that are not available. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tip of my soldering iron here to just make sure it's clean. To just melt some of the plastic to try and fuse it back together on the edge here. I don't want to damage the teeth so I'm not going to go up into the teeth area just on the corners here and again on the other side actually I don't even see it I don't even see it split on the other side it was only part part way through so this should prevent the gear from opening up a bit and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some JB Weld we'll put some JB Weld inside here and we'll stick it back on the shaft and then it will be uh, glued to the shaft before doing that, I'm going to put some alcohol out and clean the inside of the shaft here to make sure there's no oil on it. And the same as clean the shaft here. Um, make sure there's no oil on there because otherwise my epoxy is not going to stick very well. So we'll just clean this up. Get any, any oil or anything off of here. So we've got a bit of JB Weld epoxy on this little bag here, so we're just going to mix this up. It'll turn to a gray color once we've got it uniformly mixed. Put a little bit onto the shaft here. Onto the end of the shaft.
put the shaft all the way on. Smear a bit more around where the shaft protrudes a bit there. We're going to let this set for a while and then we're going to come back once this is set we'll then try putting the gears back together and see whether the mechanism will go through the motions without uh, binding. Just put a little bit more on here. So now that the epoxy has a, had a chance to fully dry we can try and put the rest of this back together now. So we can fit the teeth on like that, and I think this one lines up about like that. I'm just kind of eyeballing things here. I don't see any timing marks on this particular FL mechanism, so it's a little different than others. We'll see if I push the push this in. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> we'll try that again. It should be on this way. The fan gear should be all the way on this side that. Okay, when the cassette goes in and it pushes in, the gears will rotate like this and that should drop the cassette down and providing it doesn't stick on anything, the cassette drops into place like that. Okay, it appears the only reason it's sticking, or at least from what I can see, is because I didn't have the side cover on. If I put the side cover on and give the tape a bit of a push and then wind the gear by hand, you'll see that the tape goes down in the mechanism, which it does. And now the front of the tape is open, ready for loading. To eject, it's just the opposite. We turn the motor the opposite direction and the tape will lift up and the tape will eject. One of the problems that's occurred on this chassis is something that's very common on the camcorders too. You notice that the guide post here is not tight. I can turn that guide post without any effort. So the tape path is going to need to be aligned on this thing before it ever works. Well let's see if we can get the uh, front loading mechanism at least working properly. If we can get the front loading mechanism working then I'm sure the rest of the, the unit will also be fine. Another thing it's a good idea to do whenever you have any of these old vintage machines like this is there was a little head cleaning foam wheel that's activated like that whenever the tape is inserted or removed. The problem is these foam wheels disintegrate. The rubber foam disintegrates after a while and it'll actually contaminate the head. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing off just because if you get one of these little rubber wheels that's contaminated, this foam wheel that's contaminated, which this one here is, it's falling apart. Look at this. Where am I here? This is the little wheel I just took off. It's uh, disintegrating. So as that thing disintegrates, when it makes contact with the head drum, it's going to actually leave a film behind, which is going to stick on your tape. So if you've got these foam wheels on these old units, it's a good idea to remove it because it's going to put more crap onto the head than is than's there. I mean, and especially eight millimeter, really the only. The only way to, to clean an 8mm head, believe it or not, is uh, using a dry cleaner. That's the way that, uh, because 8mm uh, in digital video uses a metal tape. The solvent based head cleaners that work fine for other types of tape machines, and I would, I would never recommend a wet cleaner for any VCR. Just because you put a wet tape up against a spinning head, you're asking for trouble. I would never use an Allsop or any other type of head cleaner, but where those wet cleaners worked was um, in the uh, original cassettes. It had a little mechanical cassette 
that had a little wiper arm on it and you put the cleaning fluid on it the little wiper arm would go back and forth on the uh, cassette head and they were somewhat effective although I still say a gimmick but uh, Hey, Allsop Corporation sold millions of those things to people. But uh, I've never been a big fan of any of these head cleaning, any of these wet cleaners. The dry cleaners work, but they do so by basically, they work like sandpaper. They work by filing off the the clog on the head. If you use a dry type cleaner too much, you're going to wear down your head prematurely. That's just the way that it is. But, saying that, sometimes it's the only way to get the heads clean, especially on like an 8mm or a DV or a DAT player because it's metal particle tape that has contaminated the heads and a solvent won't dissolve it. You can't clean it by hand with a solvent. It won't do anything. You got to use a cleaning tape to basically file off and if the head's clogged in theory if the head is dirty the abrasive tape is going to take the contamination away and not the head. At least that's in theory. In theory it will it will clean the head and it won't wear the head away. <clears throat> and if you only use it when the heads are clogged you'll probably get away with that for a while. But uh, if you use it when it's not necessary well they all say don't use it unless you need to for a reason because it will uh, wear the head out prematurely if you overuse it. So we'll just put the circuit board back in, put, a, put our plugs back in here and uh, see if we can hook this thing up and make it work. Got to figure out where all these plugs go. They're color coded which makes my job a little bit easier. And this one here goes into this flat ribbon connector here. And there's another one on the side that goes into this connector on the side here, on the front. There's one. This other one goes up to the front here. It goes in like this. That gets the board back in place and now I can reseat the PC board. It seats under a couple of clips. So that's got the front loader back on to the chassis and now we just have to put the chassis back into its video board and power supply there that'll make it easier to get at okay now we can mount the we can mount the chassis back in place and then reconnect the screws or me reconnect the connector. Put the screws in here to hold the chassis in place. Somehow I think I'm forgetting something too. It's always the way, right? This is the video board here. So now I can get at the, that connector. Get a little more room to work on it. Now I can work the connector together.
Okay. Now we can put these boards back in. Put the screws back in to hold them and the unit should be ready to power up and see whether it's going to accept the tape. Okay. Maybe we have a switch or something that's out of alignment. It's trying to uh, go and unload the mechanism. Okay, it went in, the tape. Let's see if the tape will come out. Okay, yeah, on closer inspection, I'm pretty sure this is where I messed up here. There's a little lever here that actually activates this release lever and pulls it like that. There it is, you can't see it there, but it pulls this little lever. It's activated, there's a little catch. If you look on the bottom of here, it's a little plastic catch here. This has to be able to push this lever this way, that way. Which means that in order for that to happen, it has to be on this side of this cam or this little lever here so that it can flip that lever. So it can flip the lever like that because that is what releases when the cassette is down. Whoops, you're not seeing what I'm seeing here. I'm pan that camera, we'll turn this thing around a bit so you can see it. Okay, so to eject, it moves this lever this way, which moves this lever this way, which is what actually releases this catch that locks when the cassette is down, this locks that lever in place. I think I was on the wrong side of this when I put the cassette mechanism on, I was on the wrong side of this lever so that it couldn't activate it. I think that's what the problem is. I'm just gonna double check and make sure because everything else looks good. I don't see anything else that looks to be wrong on this unit here. Uh, everything else looks to be in place. All the motors are working. It's just that it wouldn't eject the tape until I actually physically pulled that lever and then they, it released it. So I'm just going to double check the alignment and put it back together and see what happens. Okay, we've got the unit back together now. Made sure I timed that correctly. Let's just try it and see if it will thread up the tape. So we turn on the power. It's a good sign. My display is lighting up. Oh, look at that. Hey! Threaded up. Let's. Uh, I don't know if this has got anything on this tape or not. We'll find out pretty quick. I haven't attached the board or anything on it yet, so let's just see if this thing will go into play. Where's the play button? There's play there. Oh, that's not good. Um. Uh, we end up with a big bloody mess in here. We have tape everywhere. This thing just spooled off about 20 feet of tape into the cassette, into the machine. Uh, I hope there's nothing on this tape that's valuable because uh, as you can see this tape is uh, not in good shape. Well, we've taken one step forward and a step back anyway. Back to the drawing board on this one. Obviously something is not quite right with it at this point. And that I have to investigate. It could be... It looked like that capstan motor ran backwards. Is what looked like happened. Now it could be something as simple as a mode switch that's dirty okay well we'll load this tape one more time and just see what happens it loads and of course it stopped because the tape itself is damaged and we'll hit eject Hmm. We'll try rewind and see what happens. 
This time I'll get ready to cut the power off quickly if something goes haywire. Okay, so the take up spool is not turning, or the take up supply spool is not turning when I go into rewind. Let's try ejecting the tape. And it, it wound it back in that time. I'll try going into fast forward and see what happens this time. Okay, this button is fast forward. The fast forward works. I will play. Play appears to work too. Okay. So the problem is it's just not working when it goes into rewind. Ah. Yeah. Maybe just the tape is sticking. Let's see if there's any tension on here when I go into rewind. Well, now I know where to look. At least now I know the front loading mechanism is working. When the capstan motor is reversing, a little, there's a little gear here that's supposed to flip back and forth. And it's not for whatever reason. So the pendulum gear is not going to the other side. Yet it is there. Interesting. reason we're not going to get a picture off this is this tape I believe is in digital 8. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. I'll just look, put the camera right over top. So if you look at what's happening here, when I put it into reverse, or rewind or reverse search, see what's happening there? The spool is not turning. Oh, well, now it is. Well, whatever was happening, it seems to have cleared itself. Interesting. So it may have been just, um, it may have been just some uh, lubricant that dried out and now it's starting to work its way in or it may have even been tape sticking to the drum because this drum was pretty sticky this came from a very high smokers environment let's uh, try doing a recording on this tape and see if it works so I'm just gonna make a quick recording off of a, a digital 8 tape that I've got here we're making a recording now and uh, we'll see if this thing plays back Looks like we may have a clogged head, so let's just uh, let's just try running the cleaning tape through this thing and see whether this thing will clean up. Okay, we're gonna make our recording now. We're just doing a test recording off of another tape here. I just ran the cleaning tape here through it for 10 seconds. We'll see whether we ha have the picture here on playback. So I'm just gonna let this record here for a couple minutes, and we'll check this out and see how it looks. Well, we've got a recording on here. That's for sure. There we go on playback. Okay, the uh, unit's done. Yeah, just put the cover back on it. We'll eject the tape here. Gonna put the front cover back on it. Put the top on it, and this one's done. As usual, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.